afternoon, everybody, and thanks for being here. Thanks for those who are uh, watching us on a stream. Um, today's master class is focused on cellist, and I just, since we're actually a minute ahead of time, our artist is with us, but I just wanted to give you a little bit of a, a rundown. Um, for a very long time, and, and very importantly, um, the great cellist Orlando Cole, who was a member of the Curtis String Quartet, helped found the New School of Music, which then actually merged into Temple, was a teacher here. In fact, Mr. Cole retired um, uh, from everywhere else, but still kept teaching here. So we are very proud of that record, that we are the final school in the area here where Orlando Cole kept teaching. He was certainly um, a giant in the field of cellists. If you go to our room 503C upstairs, we have a bunch of his memorabilia there. I'd love to show it to you at, at some time if you'd like to, to see that. We have two cellists today, and both cellists are also, and Miss, I'm sorry, our, our artist is um, actually one of Mr. Cole's favorite students, um, as I've always learned. And um, uh, we're so grateful that she's with us. She is a, um, a world-renowned cellist, a founder of the Mendelssohn String Quartet, does a lot of performing and teaching in New York and a lot of other places, is um, one of the most well-regarded um, uh, cellists, for, especially for chamber music, which is something that's our focus. So it's really wonderful that she's able to be with us and we can use this electronic media here. So our two students today, um, Matthew Chung and Zubin Park, Matthew is a student of Xiaoming Chen, and Xiaoming is a, was a student of Mr. Cole, and then um, Zubin also is a student of Tom Cranus, who was a student of Mr. Cole. So this is a real celebration today of Orlando Cole, and um, um, I hope that someday you can kind of look up about how wonderful the Curtis String Quartet and, and Mr. Cole's legacy of teaching was, but we're actually going to be able to celebrate that here today. So um, without further ado, we'll begin the master class. How about if everybody in the room welcome Miss Marcy Rosen. <laughs> and as mentioned, our first performer today is Matthew Chung. He will be playing the, high, the first movement of the Haydn C Major Concerto, and he is a student of Xiaomeng Chen. Again, Matthew.
Matthew. How long have you been working on that? Huh? How long have you been working on that? Um, since like the beginning of the summer. Uh huh. Excellent. Yeah, and I like the cadenza too. I don't know that cadenza. Who did you write that yourself? No. <laughs> <laughs> but I liked it. So that's so that's very good. So this is a a, a fun piece. It's very virtuosic, right? Yes. So um. So we want to do that, but some, sometimes I felt like that maybe you push the sound a little bit too much. And I also would have loved to hear more dynamic contrasts. But if we just start at the beginning, just taking even the opening bar, so that motive idea, the... Uh, we want to feel... We want to feel that triad, right? So the 32nd notes are passing tones and i think that you should use your bow you're kind of doing it but not exactly um, try to divide your bow up into thirds right? so that you move from the tip to the frog and then that top f that has the carrot or the accent on it really gets a good good accent uh, strokes so these you want to make sure you're not just play, playing short but following through so that you get resonance on the on the release and you just try that just by yourself the chords no try from the beginning The top F has to have a little bit more energy on it. So yours is a little flat, but bite and release and vibrate. Try that once more. rather than what rather than looking down at your finger and bending over lean back just play from the D to the A once more and see how you're not quite hitting that A properly uh, so are you just landing just on your third finger alone? No. 
go. Your land, do you, are you have, do you have your first, your first finger down with it? Uh, no. Uh huh, right. So you are just landing on the third finger alone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we never want to send a figure out alone. We want our, we always want to have a buddy. It's a buddy system. Just like you need with your friends when you're walking places. So uh, make sure your at least your first finger stays down to support the third finger. So the third finger doesn't have to do all the work of pushing down the string and vibrating at the same time. Yeah. So, so now that, try to sing through it. Now try to keep your first finger on the string. Right, this actually, it probably feels a little funny right now, but it sounds better. Right, so there's a more support in the sound. Now just, so what happens sometimes when you do, you kind of slow down into the, instead of going, just keep it just straight, straight on into that top F. start to add a little more warmth and, and crescendo, right? Good, good. So when you, when you play a, a separate note scale like that, the last place you want to be is near the frog. You never want to be... <laughs> Because you to get totally stuck. Doesn't it feel horrible and uncomfortable? Yes. <laughs> yeah, because then we, we're so close to the frog, we have nowhere to go. So when you play, when you play the slur, move away. So you have more room. So uh, you are slurring these two notes, right? Yeah. So draw the bow on the slur. Yeah, good. And even, even, uh, so when you do, I would try not to get all the way back to the frog, right? So you have a little bit more leeway. Try that again. That's right, and lightly. Uh, that's right, that's right. Keep going. Again, keep your first finger 
finger down. <laughs> you're doing an echo the <laughs> to make an, a different dynamic just by lessening the amount of bow. So everything, every sound and every dynamic we make has to happen because of how we use the bow. Yeah, so, so that was very good. So then go ahead. Uh, and when you get to here, so you're doing great with this, but I'd love it to be snappier. Sustain the lower note. That's right, that's the idea. So we want it to be really, really crisp. Yeah. And then the. So again, how you play. And has to be an organic evolution, right? So that the expression increases during those arrivals. So let's do it from... too pressed sounding and I think that after you do that this has to start a little less and each, one, each one grows so that you're not getting to a point of having to press too hard so so again it has to do with opening up the bow so you have small, or you're doing separate or slurred. So that's medium, so, so less, so small bow, medium bow. Large, large bow, so think of it in three sizes. Try to uh, vibrate please. so you're singing. to get too close to the frog on all those 16th notes.
I just find that 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 comes out and it doesn't sound as beautiful as I would like it to. So we have. So don't press too hard on that, okay? One more time. singing. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's okay. you go higher to use more bow. So starting in the middle. Right? Do it slowly first. Don't press, just use more bow. That better. So I want you to try to feel how that makes the sound more brilliant without pressing down so, so that it comes out a little more easily as you go higher. stressful notes. <laughs> better, better. So you so you want to get take the noise out of your playing, right? No noise. We don't need the noise. All right, so we just have a few minutes left. Let's let's look at a couple of other passages. So on the, the second section of the piece, we have this passage. So I want you to feel like the lower notes are continuous, and the upper notes uh, are growing. So, There's a line in those upper notes. So you'd want to use more bow on that on this. I'm sorry. It looks like our, our stream is going to stop. I'm going to have to restart it. I apologize. Okay. It, just, it looks like it's timing out on us. I'm very sorry. Did you understand? Jacques has um, uh, motific material in it that sometimes he 
he hides from us a little bit. And in this case, in the that that rhythm is something that he uses in a ton of different pieces. But here he has a. But I think we should bring that out. folksy style and it was this piece was written in America his his American side was really showing us um, that that mo that idea and that mo that idea is also in his American quartet and the viola quintet that he also wrote in America and so in all kinds of his music so I think it's important to recognize just Dvorak's particular style and to try to bring that out Another thing is just the opening, which is more of an improvisation. But we come in, when we come in, there have been 76 measures of music played before we come in. Like, it's a good five minutes of introduction before we actually play. So when we come in, after the end of this long, very gigantic orchestral uh, introduction, <laughs> We have to have a certain presence in our and take command of the music. And then, then we've heard this theme already. So I like to still hear it, but I like it a little bit more with the tempo. ourselves as when we come in at the opening of this piece. So I don't think it should be so free that we don't understand the rhythm. And I think that there has to be a real presence of rhythm in it because it's a quite throughout the piece, there's a lot of very strong rhythmic content. So start once again. With the piano or that? At the beginning. Yes, with piano, thank you. takes us to new material. One more time. I'm glad 
glad you stopped that. Lead back to the to the second measure. Right up. Lead back. Take it. I start right there. That's fine. You keep going. So, so I'm a believer in, I'm a, I'm a, mostly a chamber music player, but I do play concertos too, but so, do I got a da 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 I don't think that it's two separate things. I think that the orchestra and the cello are integrated in getting that line through. So can you connect the piano more? Start just play those pizzante and then go on. that's missing from the piano reduction at the at our trills is the in the viola section so if you have to hear that so there's an underlying tension that happens in that and then the so it's forte piano 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 lesson but if you start in the middle of the bow and each bow increases in size as you go up it becomes brilliant without any pressure so let's try it from the allegro going into the into number five or the fortissimo yeah but just do the scale for me once more <laughs> about 
about the middle point of the bow and moving on either side of that as you're expanding your bow use, rather than just making it longer this way, do it from either side of the middle point of the bow, like a zigzag, right? Better, once more. Better, yeah, so it, I, I hope that feels a little bit different. Yeah, it does. Yeah, rather than, than punching at it to just try to expand it and open up your bow arm. Okay, let's do it there and then we'll continue. much retard because once again the piano and the or uh, the cello and the orchestra are integrated so the <laughs> sorry yeah go ahead you can come in so One, two, three, four, five, six measures that bring you to the tempo of the second theme, right? And you just do that from. so that uh, you're, when you feel the impulse and you play off the middle of the bar. And, and then when you get to... Um, if you keep that going and so and the upbeats are very important not to get stuck on those upbeats can you try the second theme once more mm -hmm. Thank you. 
Okay, uh, can we skip a little bit because I thought you did fine with the next section. Can you skip over to a... to do this con forza. The... Can you let go of the bottom chord and just hold the top note? you never hear the top note. Yeah. And then uh, the same thing with the bow, middle of the bow. And using more of the bow as you open up. Yeah. Yeah. Can you try that? thing but words because we're running out of time I want to just do a little bit on the double stops so also right in the middle of the bow and here too so the stroke is the more bow you need to draw. Yeah, 
Yeah, so I think that articulation is very important. All right, I just got a message that says we have to end. <laughs> I'm very sorry. It's great to hear you. How, how old are you, Zubin? I'm 17. 17. Have you gotten to play this with the orchestra yet? Uh, Not yet? Not yet. I hope you do soon. That'll be fun. Excellent. Good job. Thank you so much. Well, um, please join me in thanking Ms. Rosen. I'm sorry about the, uh, the technical issues. We'll get that worked out with the IT guys who aren't around today. So, um, uh, but thank you so much. Uh, it's a big help, and it's great to have you as always. And it's great to keep this tradition that you and, and uh, actually these two students, teachers, have to pass along the great legacy of Mr. Cole. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you.